On this part, we are going to start designing our app and we are going to start with the navigation bar. For that, let us go to Visual Studio Code and see it in action. In here, the first thing that we need to do is that we need to modify our app so the navigation bar component is loaded. And if you go to the app folder, in here you have all the components. And one of the components is the navbar component. So this is basically the component that we're going to design which will be used for the navigation bar. We also have the footer and also have the home page. Now we're going to have at the top the navigation bar. We're going to have at the bottom the footer. And then between the navigation bar and the footer, we are going to load all these other components, like for example, the details component, the details of a movie, the details of a review, and all this other stuff. We have said that in an Angular app, the main component is the app component, and that component is also known as the entry point of an Angular application. So for that, let us go to the app.component.ts, and in here, you can see that we have just a full name property, and then if you navigate to the app.component.html, you can see that by using to a data binding, we are displaying the full name. So we are just using the input to provide some data and then using the P tag and then interpolation to display the result. Now I'll just go to the component.ts, I'll remove this value, then go to the component.html, remove all the code. Now if I save all the changes and go back to the app, you will see that now in here we have just an empty screen. So let us go back to VS Code. In here now in the app.component HTML, we said that we are going to first load the navbar component. So app navbar, this is the component. If you go to the TypeScript file, you're going to see in here that this is the selector. So it's app-navbar. That's why we have to type in here app-navbar. Then inside here, so we're going to have basically after the navbar, we are going to load any of the components. Now for demo, I'll just use the, the home component. And then at the end, we are going to have the footer. So this is the header, basically. Then here we are going to have the application content. Application content meaning wherever we are on the app. So for example, if we are on the movie details component, then we are going to load the movie details component in here. And then at the end, we are going to have the app footer. So the navigation bar and the footer are always going to be displayed, but the, the component or the application content is going to be updated. Now, when we talk about routing, we are going to learn how to replace, for example, the app home with a different component based on the URL. But for now, we are just going to use the app home for demo. If I go back to the browser, now you can see that I have in here navigation bar works, home works and footer works. Let us go to bootstrap website and search for a navigation bar because the intention of this course is to talk about Angular. So anything that we can find ready, like for example, the navigation bar, the bootstrap cards and all this information, we're going to copy it from the bootstrap official website. This way, you're going to also learn how to leverage or how to use existing code in your app. Navigate to getbootstrap.com and go to docs and then navigate in here to navigation bar or you can just search for nav bar. So this is the one. Now, before we copy the navigation bar, you can see in here that we are using the version 5.3. And in our app, we're also using the version 5, but we're using the version 5.2.3. So let us go back to Bootstrap website. Now in here, you can change this to bootstrap.2.3. I don't think that anything that we're going to use throughout this course is going to be different in version 2 and version 3. But just to make sure that everything works as expected, I'll just change the drop down in here to version 2. So then we have the same library reference in our app. Now in here I'll just scroll down and search for a navigation bar example. And I can see that the first example is kind of similar to what I want to have. And you can see I have a title in here, I have two buttons, I have a search bar and two buttons here on the right. In here there are more buttons, but I'll just copy this one, paste it in my app and just remove the extra buttons. So for that, I'll just go back to Visual Studio Code. Now in here, I'll just go to the app navbar component. You can see that I have it in here. We don't need anything for now on the component or on the TypeScript component. We are just going to paste the code in here. I'll remove the navbar works and then just paste all the code. Then I'll just save all the changes. If I go back to the browser, 
you'll now see that I have the navigation bar here at the top. But of course, we need the login button, we need two buttons, and we don't need anything else. So let us just go back to Visual Studio Code. Now here I'm going to first wrap all the code. For that, I need to just select Alt Z, and you can see that the code is going to be collapsed. And then just use the data down here. I'm going to start from the top to the bottom. And here I'm going to first modify the navbar brand in here. I'll change it from navbar to be movies. Then I'll just remove the href. Then down here we have this button for whenever the menu is toggled. Then in here we are going to have two menu items or two navigation items. The first one is going to be the home. So I'll not update that one. I'm going to remove the href. The second option is going to be the feedback. We're not going to have a drop down, so I'll just remove this one from here. I'm going to also remove the disabled menu item. Then on the right, we are going to have the form. And inside the form, we have the search. And then after the search, we have the search button. And then after the search button, as you could see, we had the login button. So let us create another button in here. For that, I'll just type button and class. It's going to be class btn and outline dash primary. This is going to give our button the blue color. And then in here, I'll just type log in. Now let us go back to the browser. Now here on the app, you can see that we have the movies title, we have the home, the feedback, and here on the right, we have the search bar, we have the search button and the login button. But if you go to the final app, you'll see that next to the options, we do have icons next to the home and feedback option, and also on the login button. For that, let us go to the bootstrap page. In here, you have the icons, so you have the icons option. Here, scroll down, let us search for these two icons. So we have the home and the feedback in here. I'll just search for home and you can use any of these icons. I'll just use the first one, copy this i tag. And then inside here, you see that you have the bi then bi class, which makes this icon show up. So I'll just go back to the app here on the home line 15. I'll just paste it in here. Then let us just go and search for the feedback one. Let us search in here, let's say chat maybe. Okay, it's this one, the chat dots. Let us copy, go back to Visual Studio Code. I'll just paste it in here. And then I'm going to comment out the login button for now because that is going to be a conditional button. So basically, if the user is not logged in, then we're going to show the login button. Otherwise, we're going to show the logout button. So that's why I'm going to comment out that line for now. Save all the changes and go back to the app. Now, if you refresh the browser, you're going to see that even though we pasted the code from the icons section, we still don't see the icons. And that's right, because we need to use the icons library. So what I've done is that I have navigated to the cdnjs.com. In here, I've searched for bootstrap and then icons. So I'll just do the same. So I'll just go back here and then search in here for bootstrap icons. And you can see that the version of the icons right now is 1.10.4. And then I'll just copy the font bootstrap iconsmincss copy the tag, go back to Visual Studio Code, and then in index.html, just before the icon, I'm going to paste the link. Let's go back to the browser. Now, if I refresh the browser, I'll be able to see the icons in here. Now, since we are in this part, let us also search for a footer. So I'll just go to bootstrap. Search in here for footer. I don't see any footers in here. So I'll just search in here, header and footer. I still don't see anything in here. I'm just going to Google for bootstrap footer. And then here I have this option which says footers and then bootstrap. Uh, from here, I'll just right click in here and then view page source. Let's see. I'm just going to copy one of the footers down here. So whichever you want to have. For example, if you want to have the middle one in here, you can just copy this one. If you want to have the first one, you can copy this one. I'll just use the first one, which means I'm going to use this footer in here. It's going to copy. And if you want, you can copy it together with the class container. The container will simply just give it some space here on the left and here on the right. So I'll just copy it together with the container. Go back to Visual Studio Code. And then in here, go to the footer component, then go to the HTML. Just paste it in here. And then in here we are going to have, so copy, let's say 20, 23. Then I'll just type my name in here, but of course it's not copyrighted. And down here you can have the icon 
or you can remove all these parts. So I remove all these parts. Let's save the changes and go back to the app. If you come in here, you will see that we have the footer which says 2023 Erwistrupia. But the date was hard coded. Now, by using the interpolation, we can simply remove the hard coded value in here and just get it from the TypeScript component. So for that, in here, I'll just go to the footer.ts. In here, I'll just type current year. And then that's going to be a number, number, new, date, and then dot get full year method. Now let us copy the current year, save the change in here, go to the footer.component.html and simply replace the 2023 with the double curly brackets, or as we call it differently, the interpolation brackets, and then current year. If I save the changes and go back to the app, I'm going to see the same result. So in here we have the header, we have the footer. Now on the next part, we are going to start with the home page.